Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're checking out the Parrot Rolling Spider drone today, and they sent this to the show to take a look at. Now, we looked at uh, the Bebop drone a few months ago, and that one's a lot more expensive than this one is. So the Bebop is like four or $500, has GPS and all these great features. This one is kind of limited, uh, more of a toy than anything else, but it is a lot of fun. So on first glance, it looks like something that uh, might just roll around on the ground, which it'll do if you uh, kind of force it towards the ground with its little wheels on here. It'll kind of roll back and forth like an RC car might, but uh, these uh, little things here also provide it some protection when it's flying around too. So it keeps the propellers from hitting things, uh, which is actually pretty nice. You can take the wheels off if you want, uh, but as you can see from the slow-mo video we did, it really does a nice job of keeping the propellers from hitting things. It wouldn't uh, prevent you from like flying into a tree or something like that, but uh, it will keep it when it's crashing uh, from having those propellers strike something, which has been uh, really nice to see. But you can very easily just uh, pop it off here just by uh, grabbing this little uh, handle right there and just lifting it off and you can have the drone uh, kind of stand on its own. Now this is the little brother to the Bebop drone, so it does have some things in common, including the app that you use to control it. So it uses the same app app uh, that you would use with the more expensive drones. This is kind of a nice way to get started. You can play with this. If you graduate to the bigger drone, the controls are the same. Uh, it does lack a few things though. It doesn't have a video camera on board. It just has a, a tiny little camera here. It also lacks GPS. And so that means if it uh, loses signal with uh, the controlling device, it will just kind of uh, hover there and uh, kind of get blown away by the wind sometimes. This happened to me last night as I was flying it around. It just kind of got picked up by a gust of wind and just kind of went away from me. So it does, doesn't fly off because some people have said that it kind of flies off. It doesn't really do that. It just gets caught in the wind and blown away, essentially, especially when you have uh, the wheels attached. It gives it a little bit more surface area for it to get pushed over with. So that's been uh, something to keep in mind. You may want to fly it away from trees and other things that it might uh, find itself into. Uh, it also is controlled via Bluetooth and not with Wi-Fi. So the range is less. You only get about 10 meters tops uh, when you're flying it around. Uh, you also do get a little camera here at the bottom though that can shoot pictures uh, back to your uh, device, although it's not video. And I'll give you a quick uh, peek at one of those photos here. This will also give you an idea of like the top uh, uh, altitude you'll probably get out of it. So while the Bebop drone can do, you know, a couple hundred feet sometimes up in the air, this one, uh, the best you're gonna get is maybe 30 or 40 feet before you run out of Bluetooth range. And battery life I found to be about eight to 10 minutes or so, give or take, so not very long on these batteries. Uh, you can buy extra batteries, of course, and they also have an extra battery charger for another $25. I just wanted to show you the app real quick. We are going to take some flights with this in a minute. Uh, but when the battery is connected, you'll see that he is uh, lit up green here and he's ready to go. So that is a, a good thing. What's nice about this drone versus the Bebop drone is that you don't connect via Wi-Fi. Again, it's Bluetooth. So the second uh, this guy comes on, the app will find it uh, automatically without having to do any reconnection or anything like that. Uh, you can you know, browse a couple of things on here. There is a way to access its internal memory wirelessly, but you can uh, also connect it to your computer via USB to get those files out of there. You can just see though how slow that Bluetooth connection is. These are really tiny, tiny photographs. These would fit on a floppy disk, uh, but they take a long time to transfer over uh, the Bluetooth connection. So the best way to get those pictures off uh, is to use the USB cable when you do that. Uh, you control it though through the free flight application here. Uh, this, there's, it's pretty simple actually. If you want it to take off, uh, you have to launch it, which we're going to do in a second here by clicking the takeoff button. Uh, but you just uh, push up this way to gain altitude, uh, push it down this way to reduce altitude, and you can change the, uh, the drone's orientation just by uh, tapping your finger left and right here. Uh, this will actually do something right now, as you can see, uh, because when it's in rolling spider mode, you can use the motion controls, which means uh, you just hold this down and then tilt your iPad uh, forward or backwards or your Android device to get it to move in a direction you want it to move in. So it's pretty responsive to that. Uh, when it's up in the air and you do this, uh, pushing it uh, forward, when you go kind of like this, uh, will actually uh, tilt the drone down and it will pick up airspeed and fly around. So it's pretty cool uh, that way. Uh, there's other couple things you can do with this also. There is a command here to uh, just put it into a mode where it detects when it's falling and automatically takes off. So you can check out uh, James the Inter turn here. We just tossed it off my back porch there and it just starts flying itself automatically. You got to make sure that that uh, option is selected on your, uh, your app here before you do that. Otherwise it will just fall down and that would be the end of it. Another thing you can do is just tap twice on it while it's flying and they have some uh, pre-built tricks in there. So this is one of them. It'll do like a flip right in the air for you there, which is pretty cool. So there are some things that uh, it will do right out of the box without uh, having to learn how to do them. You just double tap on the app and it'll do the flip or it does a couple other things also that uh, you can just uh, select from different options on here for different tricks and whatnot. So pretty cool stuff. So I, I kind of like uh, flying around with it. It's pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to do
do is we are going to check out something that I think is really cool and very unique to this drone. Uh, there's a little app that uh, is designed for kids to learn programming that works with this. So you can actually set up autonomous flight plans for this to follow. Now remember, there's no GPS on here, so you can't go you know, pick out places on a map uh, for it to fly to, but you can uh, give it very specific commands and have those commands executed autonomously. So we're gonna move this thing into the other room and check out that feature. Now the app we're going to use is something called Tickle, which is a way of introducing kids to programming. So we'll pull up one of their demo uh, applications here, and you can see there's code here, but uh, it's very easy to understand exactly what all this code does. So for example, if I tap on this little thing here and put the rock in front of the whale, uh, he changes direction based on uh, what that program calls for. Now what we can also do though is create a new project in Tickle, and if I go over here to new project, uh, you'll see that Parrot Mini Drone is one of the options. So I'll select that. So what's going to happen here is we're going to start playing this, take off, fly forward for a second, flip, and then land. So I'm going to push the play button right now, and there it goes. It's taken off. Uh, it will now fly forward for one second. It will flip, and then it will land. And that is pretty much uh, how you program this thing. Now, there are commands on the side here that we can add to it. So, for example, maybe I wanted to have it maybe turn right, and then maybe have it then turn uh, left. Uh, when we do that, so I'll click that, click left, uh, then we'll go back to our drone, and it uh, looks like it's a little crooked right now. We'll see if it can write itself. We'll hit play here. It's in the next room, so it's a little bit easier just to refly it again than have to go out there. Uh, so there it goes. It's flying right, and it's going to turn left again. It's going to flip and probably crash, and it will land. Hopefully, there it goes. So that is some of the autonomous flight commands that you can do with Tickle. And you can really start thinking about uh, some of the stuff that you can do because you can do if-then statements and uh, some other things. And you can also add multiple drones to the mix also, it looks like. So you might be able to have them uh, do things in concert with each other as well. So a lot of neat stuff that you can do autonomously uh, from the app here. And it really only works with that uh, little drone out there at the moment. So that is the Parrot Rolling Spider Drone. This is a really fun little toy. Uh, certainly not as robust as the more expensive Bebop Drone, but if you have kids and you're, you know, you're not sure they're going to be able to control one of these things, uh, this is probably the better entry point. It has the same flight characteristics, so the app is the same, but it also has a lot of the autonomy on board to keep it stable in flight, which I think is really helpful for learning how to use these things. So you kind of get the feel for this one and then maybe graduate up to the more expensive one later. Again, it lacks the video camera and some of the other features on there. Uh, you definitely want the kids to use this with supervision. Uh, these propellers will not chop off fingers or anything like that, but they do hurt. Uh, one of them bit my arm earlier today, so that was, uh, you know, it, it, it's going to leave a mark. So you want to make, make sure that your kids aren't flying these into each other or something like that. But uh, again, just uh, under supervision, it's a really uh, fun toy and a lot easier to fly indoors than the larger drones are. Uh, these wheels really make a big difference because if it does come up to a wall, it'll just kind of roll up the wall as opposed to having uh, propellers leaving marks and walls and everything. So really, uh, smart design here. It's protects, it protects the drone, but it also protects your home uh, too, which I think is pretty important. The big feature though uh, is the fact that it links up with that Tickle app. I think that is really cool because programming can you know, tend to be kind of an abstract thing for kids sometimes. And uh, to be able to actually program something physical in the real world is awesome. And it'd be cool if this thing had more sensors on it because maybe you could have it detect things and react uh, based on what it detects or something. But there might be some other kinds of integrations that uh, Tickle might provide in the future. So I think it's just an awesome way to learn programming uh, by actually be, being able to control something in the real world, which for me makes this really cool. Uh, so there's a lot of neat stuff you can do with this, a lot of fun and uh, not too expensive either. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.